I take a lot of pride in providing an open as well as inclusive research space for, for students that come from all backgrounds, especially students that are part of the 2S LGBTQIA community. And that's important. If I can provide those types of spaces for students who may be part of the, the 2S LGBTQIA community to be able to provide them with an opportunity to, to do science, provide them with an opportunity to do research uh, is I think a great way that we can not only promote inclusivity, but we can also uh, promote diversity. I think you can never just look at something, you know, in a laboratory setting, right? You have to understand sort of the context that these ideas of sex and gender, the, the context that these exist in, being aware of that is really important. Um, being aware of language, for example. So it's really easy when you're, you know, say making a question for students, right? To say, okay, here's my population. I divided up into men and women, yada, yada, yada. And you maybe don't realize that's an incomplete way of looking at things and that sort of helps to reinforce certain norms that while it might make for a simple question to ask someone and sometimes when you're teaching what you want is a simple example you don't want to complicate things too much it's an incomplete view of things and it, it ultimately serves i think to make certain people feel underrepresented how can science help people who have diverse identities and diverse perspectives Science is more than a culture, it's a tool. It's a tool that is within the purview of all of humanity. And all of us can be bettered by using science as a tool and by looking to scientific research to uh, enhance our lived experiences. As a scientist myself, I make space in my lab for people to be comfortable in their gender and sexual identities for people to feel empowered. My lab is a safe space. I'm 2S, I'm asexual, and I have a non-binary gender identity. I mean, I could just keep listing different things. I, I create a safe space and a, I hope a welcoming one for other people who are not within heteronormative um, gender or uh, sexuality presentations or identities. It's really great to have different, not just personalities, but points of view and understanding. And that's just, I think, the basis. And that's just like a start of like getting people to understand and learn new things, right? So one of the biggest important things about even going to college for your education is being surrounded by different people. And that's what makes you grow the most. And that's the same in science, like being surrounded by different people, different viewpoints, different experiences, different life events, whether you have privilege or you don't have privilege. I think everyone needs to be around different people so they understand that there's something outside of their bubble. And that's the biggest thing something can learn. Someone can learn the best part of someone's education. You cannot separate identities. I'm not just trans. I'm a brown transgender woman. I'm also racialized. And in fact, race cuts more than gender. Because if you think about it, a white woman is more powerful than a black man. So in a way, their race actually marginalizes more than gender. There are a lot of complexities at play in terms of underrepresentation, marginalization, and thus when we target supports, it should not only be specific to, to us, LGBTQ+. Any support that you actually give to any member of the community will have that um, rippling effect towards other underrepresented groups. It's also important to talk about issues that matter not only to, to us, LGBTQ+, individuals, but also to general population. We have to be advocating and as a community, I'm just, just talking about me as grad students, to them as faculty. We have to come together to advocate for the rights and welfare of everyone.